just first want to say thank you to everyone in this room and everyone that organized this. It's such a cool opportunity for the community and for me. Okay. <laughs> this is me and my natural habitat, a wilderness untainted by humans, except for selfishly me, and apparently the industries that bring us hard plastics and PBR. My self-indulgent 20s gave me a need to be a part of something bigger than myself. I wanted to leave an environment for future generations healthier than the one I got to experience. Modern agriculture is grossly unsustainable. The way we eat is destroying the earth that sustains us. Pictured here is the deforestation of the Amazon rainforest to grow feed for animal agriculture, and that does not account for water pollution, greenhouse gas emissions, air pollution, chemical runoff, erosion, it's all connected. So I went back to school. I thought I could help food, uh, mend food systems. I got a master's in the science of nutrition from the National University of Natural Medicine, where I was assigned some research in iron deficiency anemia and became acquainted with a tribe, kind of an anomaly of a tribe in Zimbabwe, whom though they were vegetarians, had very few instances of iron deficiency anemia. That's because they're not fully vegetarians. They eat Mopani worms, which are very nutrient-dense, specifically in heme iron. Further in my studies, I found another report. First of all, this is of interest because iron deficiency anemia is one, one of the world's number one public health issues, and that's an easy solve. So this next research the WHO, FAO had put out, um, viability and sustainability of insect diets for humans. The WHO projects we'll have 10 billion people living off of the Earth's bounty by 2050. So I present to you entomophagy. This is the practice of eating insects. It's one of humans' time-old eating traditions. It's even been proposed that Homo sapiens have been so successful evolutionarily because of their ability to forage for this protein source. Our closest family relative in the animal kingdom, the chimpanzee, foraging for ants and termites. Nicole's on board. She knows that this unutilized, sustainable food system is a delicious one, and this proves that affluent white women worldwide can be active participants. <laughs> <laughs> the FDA already allows a certain amount of bugs in your foodstuffs, and that doesn't account for the ones you eat on your bike on your way to work. <laughs> Insects are superfoods. Each one has a unique nutritional profile. Crickets, for instance, more gram per gram, more protein than beef, more calcium than milk, and more iron than spinach. Essential fatty acids rivaling that of salmon and prebiotic fiber for a healthy gut. Insects are wildly sustainable. They require a fraction of the land, feed, and water as other competing protein sources, including plant proteins. Insects can be farmed in urban settings, making local protein possible for cities and they're lower down the food chain, meaning there are fewer variables in what they eat, in turn what we eat, and that they reproduce quickly and efficiently. Crickets, for instance, require 30 days to reach maturation without chemicals, hormones, or antibiotics. The biodiversity of insects is of interest because we don't have to monoculture the hell out of one thing, which we know to be very detrimental to um, agriculture and the earth. If you've ever considered a paleo diet, paleolithic peoples feasted on bugs and grubs. And in fact, they fit most diet trends, keto, whole foods diet, gluten-free, dairy-free, and on and on. But the truth is, historically, eating insects has been a staple, not a trend. While Westerners have an aversion to eating insects, 2.5 billion people worldwide never stopped, with large markets in Africa, Asia, and South and Central America. Food is as personal to people as politics and religion. And in order to face aversion, we must understand where it comes from. A recent New York Times article proposed that Christopher Columbus's divisive othering of indigenous peoples led to a white European mentality that placed themselves above these savages because they ate bugs. This implies the inherent racism that is embedded in entomophagy. There are other food items which we haven't readily accepted in our diet in the Western world, including sushi, which we had to disguise as uh, the California roll to gain popularity, and lobster, which was only seen fit for prisoners in the beginning. Of course, there are mysteriously some things we've accepted. Easy cheese, no problem, Twinkies, and the beloved American hot dog, which is essentially pig lips and turd cutters. 
Speaking of turd cutters, insect poop is frass. It's an organic garden fertilizer. <laughs> insect agriculture is regenerative, supporting circular economies. They thrive off of a diet of organic waste from commercial and agricultural settings, which would otherwise go to the landfill and create more greenhouse gas emissions. Whether you know it or not, the market is rising globally and here in the Western world. Lots of things exist, like the insect burgers, chirpy jerky, protein powders. And at MSU, you guys have an enthusiastic entomology department that has a bug buffet once annually that the public can be a part of. If this is all sounding new to you, I'm excited to introduce your local farmers. This is James and Kathy Roland of Belgrade, Cowboy Cricket Farms. Yeah. You can go tour their farm and learn more about their facilities and their, and their processes, and you can enjoy their chocolate chip cookies, roasted cricket snacks, and protein powders. So it can look like this, entomophagy. It doesn't have to look like this. My company, Orchestra Provisions, is facing a version with the baby steps approach to normalize uh, entomophagy. I have a seasoning line with eight cultural blends where you can't see, taste, or smell the insects. It's important to know that insects can be ingredients. They don't have to be eaten whole. This is one small way we can have a huge impact. Facing aversion will pave the way for sustainable food systems and food security globally where culturally appropriate solutions can be made with insects as ingredients. I'm going to leave you with this amazing human innovation. Not super sustainable, <laughs> but available on Etsy. Prices ranging, whether you'd like uh, rhinestones or other bells and whistles. And I know that if this exists in the marketplace, our culture can be adventuresome enough to return to tradition. So let's save the earth and eat a few bugs. Thank you.